have an update on the Trayvon Martin case. Uh, it turns out that the prosecution did release a ton of evidence, uh, including eyewitnesses and witnesses for the case. However, they also released documents that indicated that George Zimmerman got treated for a pair of black eyes, a nose fracture, and two cuts to the back of his head. Now the cuts to the back of the head are well documented. You know, we've shown you the pictures of the blood in the back of the head, uh, and uh, and so uh, you have to understand that this comes from a family physician. Mm -hmm. So take it with a grain of salt about the broken nose and the black eyes, because in the video, which wasn't crystal clear, but was pretty clear when he walks into the police station, you, he doesn't seem to have a broken nose. I have had my nose broken, and we've had talked to a lot of people here who had their nose broken. In most of the instances is significant and there's blood running down, you're, you know, you get immediate swelling. He's at the police station afterwards, there, there doesn't appear to be any swelling. Mm -hmm. The day after, his personal physician says, oh yeah, 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 sure, his nose is broken and I see black eyes. So now he might be right, he might not be right. Now that's a picture taken much later, right, after he was arrested, so that's months later. Now, so, so it's not fair to say he doesn't have any marks there. But, you know, we're trying to present both sides. Now, a lot of people uh, see this evidence, and I'm already getting, you know, emails, tweets, that say like, ha ha, what happened now? You see that? Turns out Zimmerman was right. Zimmerman was right about what? Like, people, I, I guess, are assuming 100% incorrectly that we said there was never an altercation. We never said that. We said, that, yeah, there might have been an altercation because Zimmerman chased down Trayvon Martin and you, that's not in dispute, it's in the 911 tapes. He says, I'm gonna go chase the guy. The dispatcher says, don't do that, don't go after him. You, you hear you know, the eyewitness testimony of, um, well it's not eyewitness in the sense that she didn't see it, but she heard it. She was on the phone, the girlfriend of Trayvon Martin on the phone with him and he says to her, this guy's chasing me. Mm -hmm. So we know who started it, it was George Zimmerman. Right Now, so the best case scenario for Zimmerman is, okay, I went and chased after the guy, but at some point he got the upper hand, okay? And so then I had to shoot him. But that's what we were saying. You shouldn't have chased after the guy, you had the gun, and you shouldn't have shot the guy. He's the person who pursued Trayvon Martin. Trayvon I mean, didn't start no, this. Exactly. Like, just because if there was a fight, that doesn't mean it's Trayvon's fault. That's what I can't, people who have no logic bother me. Okay, and like people like they're dying to for Zimmerman to be right, right? For whatever political or personal reason, they want Zimmerman to be right. So they're like, aha, we knew there was a fight, we knew there was a fight. Okay, yes, we know there was a fight. Zimmerman chased after him, started a fight, and then ended the fight by shooting the kid in the chest. So what part of that is unclear? Now the best case scenario for Zimmerman is that his statement is true. And even that statement isn't that good, which is that, yes, I chased after him, and if somebody was chasing after you in the middle of the night, what would you do? You'd run, right? Or you might say, okay, if he's catching up to you, maybe you tackle him, you fight back. Somebody's chasing you, right? Zimmerman says at some point, uh, Trayvon Martin attacked him. Again, why did he attack you? If, if you're granting him that, which I'm not granting him at all, right? But if Trayvon tackled him or went after him, it's because he was being chased. It's the most obvious thing in the world, right? And then, and then he says, well, then I was losing the fight, so I shot him. How is this in any way a justification? So, and how's the fact that there was a fight show that Zimmerman was innocent? It doesn't show he's innocent at all. What I'm curious about, and I don't know the answer to this question, is if, they, if there was an altercation, and the altercation began as a result of George Zimmerman pursuing Trayvon Martin, in the middle of that altercation where George Zimmerman did fear for his life and he pulled the trigger, is he protected under stand your ground? So that's the second part of this, right? Because people will say, well, you see, we told you, stand your ground. And at some point since there was a fight and now there's, you know, people talking about how Trayvon might have had bruises on his knuckles, you know, in the morgue, et cetera. They're like, well, you see that, he must have been hitting Zimmerman, so it's stand your ground. So let's analyze that for a second. Mm -hmm. So you're saying the guy with the gun, in your interpretation of this law, has all of the rights in the world. The guy without the gun has no rights whatsoever. Here, here's why. So you're saying the guy with the gun can chase someone down in the middle of the night, and then can start a fight, and then can shoot the guy. 
And a guy has that got shot, that got chased down, that was terrorized, has no rights whatsoever. He can't fight back. If he fights back, he gets shot. And it's totally fine, and the guy walks. And the guy without the gun, he has no rights whatsoever. He's just got to sit there and get, get, get his ass kicked. If he does any self-defense, well, then I can shoot you in the head. So the guy without the gun can't do self-defense. But the guy with the gun can initiate the fight, can finish the fight, can shoot the guy dead, and he's got all the rights in the world. That makes no sense whatsoever.